Income Tax 2023-2024. Create a tax formula worksheet using Excel part number two. Get ready and some coffee so you can recognize the quacks when doing income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you wanna build this from a blank worksheet, you may wanna begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's a bunch of tabs down below. The green tabs representing in essence the answer key the blue tabs showing the information we have done up to this point in the practice problem where we will continue at this point in time this practice problem having been created from scratch in a blank worksheet in a prior presentation what have we done thus far we've been constructing the income tax formula in a formula type setting or basis so that we can do the data input understanding and visualizing how the formula works and also so that we can create a secondary data input as an internal control as we enter the information into say software or populate it in our uh, tax forms so here's our example tax form that we've basically been mirroring over here in our worksheet starting with a very basic problem so we can give an outline of our formula as we continue on more complex problems, we will do comparisons and expand our worksheet. For now, let's just make it look a little bit fancier. So what we have is we've got the income line item, we've got the adjustments to income, the above the line deductions, in other words, giving us the subtotal of uh, adjusted gross income, AGI. Then we have the greater of the itemized deductions or standard deductions, and that's gonna give us the greater of those two, in this case being the standard deduction. That is what we can use to calculate the taxable income, which is often done, uh, that's the bottom line of our income statement. And then we can calculate the tax often done by the software backing into the average tax rate with a formula. And then we'll have other credits, other taxes that will be will build on in more complex problems giving us the total tax which we have to then compare to the payments and any refundable credits which we'll talk about in more complex problems will then give us the total tax that is due or refund let's put an underline here and so so now what i'd like to do let's put some brackets around it to start off let's put some brackets around this thing i'm going to go home tab font group put some brackets around it i'd like to center this top header uh Note that many people will probably say, okay, what I would do is do this home tab alignment and merge, but I don't like that because then it kind of messes up my ability to see different columns because I have this one large cell. So I'm going to undo that or unmerge it. And I prefer to select this area, right click and go to the format cells. And then within the alignment, 
and the horizontal alignment, I like going to the center across selection. And then I can do that. And so now it still centers. And it's a little confusing here to see where that text is because I can see it's in that first cell, as you can see in the formula bar. But uh, it's, it's a lot nicer that I haven't kind of made one large cell. Okay, so then I'm going to try to color code this whole thing to try to indicate the good numbers and the bad numbers, which is a little bit tricky because on the top half of the formula down to here, you have an income statement, income good, uh, or, or incomes is usually good on an income statement. But when you're thinking about it from a tax perspective, the income is, is actually bad but I'm still gonna color the income as green and the deductions, which are kind of similar to expenses as red, because that's probably what we normally visualize in an income statement. And then it gets even a little bit trickier down here because down here we're talking about basically taxes and, uh, and credits, which is a little wonky. So let's try to come up with a color scheme because color schemes actually do help. So on an income statement, typically income, let's make it green. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab. I'm gonna select the A and I'm just gonna make that our, our dark green. So hopefully we can see it in our practice problem. And then the deductions, which are like expenses, I'm gonna make them red. So I'm gonna select this whole area here, home tab, font group, and let's make that red. Hopefully that's dark enough that we can see in the practice problem. And that's gonna give us our adjusted gross income. So it's usually still gonna be green because it's still positive because the deductions usually haven't taken it down to zero. Then we're gonna take the greater of the itemized or standard deductions. These are decreases, kind of like expenses on an income statement would be typically red. So I'm gonna, or, you know, a, a decrease. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be red. And then you could make like the standard deduction like a negative number here, but usually I would, make this positive that'll make it easier to create our worksheets on the right and then just do a subtraction problem here so let's put an underline under this under this red one home tab font group underline and that gets to our taxable income which again would typically be green right so we're going to go home tab font group and green because it's usually still going to be positive in which case we're going to be owing taxes and then we've got the tax calculation. Now notice I'm backing into that number. I'll talk about that in a second, but I'm gonna keep it black at this point because now we're multiplying that times the right, which is kind of neutral, I guess. <laughs> and then on the bottom half, now we've got the tax. Taxes are kind of like bad. So I'm gonna to try to visualize the taxes as red now. So now I'm gonna say on the bottom half, the taxes are red and then the credits are good. So I'm gonna make that green. So I'm gonna say, all right, the credits are green. And then other taxes are bad. That's gonna increase the taxes. So I'm gonna make that red. And that'll give us our, our total tax. Tax is bad, so I'm gonna make that red. And then the payments uh, and refundable credits, the payments that we have made are good because we already made them, although we had to make them, which is not nice, but and the credits are good, so I'll make those green. And then the uh, tax due or refund. In this case, the tax due is going to be red, and that would be a positive number. And then, and then the refund is going to be green. And so that would be... now. We can actually show that over here with a with a conditional formatting. I can try to say, hey, look, if this is a positive number, I want to make it actually red because that means there's tax that is still owed at this point in time. And if it's negative, I want to make it green uh, because that means that there's an actual refund. So notice it gets a little wonky again on the second half of the formula. Why? Because the taxes are bad. That's what we owe, right? So it's red. And then if there were credits, that would reduce the amount of taxes that we owe. And then if there's other taxes, that would increase the taxes we owe. Therefore, this minus this plus this would give us the taxes. The payments that we already made have been made. And therefore, if I subtract these two out, if I get a positive number, that means we still have tax that is due. Bad, right? If it's negative, right? So you, so you could try to flip all the signs here, but so that you end up with a with a positive number that would be a refund 
But I think this is actually the best way. I think this works well. We can indicate that this is not a refund by using our color scheme so we can easily see it, right? So we can do our conditional formatting. This is in the home tab, styles, conditional formatting. So you could do something like this and say, hey, look, if this is greater than, if it's greater than zero, then we want it to be, uh, we want it to be negative or red. So there it is, it's, it's red, perfect. And then if it's, and then I'll do another one. If I say, if it's less than zero, then I'm gonna hit the drop down. I want you to make it green. So let's test that out. Let's make this like negative two, turns it to green. So now we've got that pretty, pretty fancy conditional formatting that will kind of give us an indication if it's good or bad refund or the amount that is due. Now, the next thing I like to do is basically indicate in my formula, which of these formulae are coming from another worksheet and which are gonna be data input. So in other words, this line item is coming from another worksheet. And so I'm not gonna hard code or type in 100,000 here because it's coming from this worksheet at the least, we'll add more worksheets later. So that, therefore I'm, I'm gonna leave that is, the adjustments to income will be the same. I haven't got a worksheet for it yet, so it's hard coded as a zero, but eventually I'm gonna create another worksheet once we do some adjustments to income and therefore I'm not gonna just type in like $50 here, right? Cause there's gonna be a bunch of different categories for the adjustments as you can see in the uh, tax software where we can see the adjustments are gonna be, here's the income, here's the adjustments uh, for the schedule one part number two. So all of this part number two, I can make a whole nother worksheet based on this, but I'm gonna construct it piece by piece as we see those in our practice problem. So then we have our, our, this one also a formula. It's not pulling from another worksheet, but it's just a formula. So I'm not gonna hard code anything in it. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. Itemized deductions also are gonna pull from another worksheet. That's gonna be pulling from the schedule A. I'm not gonna create a schedule A yet. We'll build the schedule A as we talk about each of these items within the schedule A. So it's hard coded now, but it won't be once we go later. This one uh, is something that I'm actually, I wanna pull from the table down here. So this is something that has to be changed based on whether or not, or what the marital status is, filing status. So I'm gonna make this one blue. So I'm gonna, we could do that by going to the home tab font group and make it blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors standard, there's the blue. So that means that this one is gonna, is gonna have, we're gonna have to do data input with it. I'm not gonna type it in, which is, and that's what I'm trying to say with the asterisks here. So that's why I tried to put the asterisks to show that these two are tied together. But I'm gonna pull this from, I have to do something to it. So usually the blue means hard coding. I'm gonna type it in there. I'm not gonna type it in there, but I have to manually do something to this cell. That's why I make it blue. This cell, I don't have to do anything manually to this one because it's gonna take the greater of these two. In other words, I can test that. If, if these itemized deductions came out to 15,000, it would take 15,000. So I'm not gonna hard code the itemized deductions. Those are gonna pull in eventually from another worksheet, but you can see how this max thing works. So that means I'm not gonna do anything to this cell because it's just gonna automatically populate. And then the taxable income, again, is a formula so I'm not doing anything to this cell. I'm not gonna manually input anything into this cell. The same with this cell because I don't actually type in the tax rate. What I'm gonna do is go to the software and say, okay, let the software calculate the tax as we did on page number two, boom, 14266. That means I'm actually gonna physically input this into the cell. So I'm gonna go home tab font group. This one is a hard coded number. Why? Because I'm not gonna try to simulate the table. You could, you could try to say, I wanna double check the tax calculation, applying out the progressive tax tables like this, but that's a pretty complex Excel worksheet. I mean, you could do it, it's not that bad, but I mean, you could, but 
we're, that's probably we're going to rely and say, okay, that looks pretty good on the software possibly to do that instead of trying to recalculate it and then simply hard code it. So I'm double checking this number in my data input by having other worksheets that flow into this income statement, giving me the detail. And then I let the software calculate this number, which I hard code into the system. Why That's why it's blue. And then the average tax will automatically populate. That's why it's not blue, because I'm not gonna do anything to that cell because that will populate with, and, and you can see in the tax summary that it's properly populating here 16.6, the effective tax rate or average tax rate. So that's the idea with that one, all right? So then so then we have the other, uh, other credits. So these are gonna be other credits that could come into play, child tax credit and so on and so forth that uh, but we, that's going to come in from another worksheet again. However, I'm going to create those worksheets basically as we go. And then we have the other taxes like self-employment tax, for example, which again, will pull into another worksheet as we go. Therefore, I'm not going to make it blue because I'm not going to hard code the numbers into here, but rather create the worksheet when we get to that part of the practice problem. That gets us to the total tax, which is a formula. Here's what we had before. And, and then we're gonna subtract out the credits and add the more taxes. And that's gonna be uh, a formula. Therefore, it's not blue. I'm not gonna hard code that number. I'm not gonna type it in there. I'm gonna leave the formula alone. And then the payments, also something that I'm not typing into here, but rather we created another worksheet over here, which is gonna pull into that line item. We will expand on this worksheet later so it'll be more complex adding more types of payments such as we currently have w2 we can add estimated payments and credits refundable credits for example earned income tax credit and part of the child tax credit and then we have the tax due or refund calculating down below which i didn't actually we're not going to hard code it we just use conditional formatting so it shows it as red or green so that's going to be our our basic starting point now like i say when we start to do more complex uh complex tax returns we will add to our worksheet so at the end of this whole cycle we will end up with a pretty expansive worksheet that's going to have a whole bunch of tabs to the right which will allow us to do data input which will feed into this first tab and, and we'll see how, how we can construct the worksheet as we go. Now, if you want to just start with that end worksheet, which is the worksheet that I would basically use uh, as my kind of starting point to double check my tax data input, then we'll, we'll hopefully we'll give you a copy of that so you can just use that worksheet if you just want to do the data input and you don't want to practice the formatting as we go. But I want to just show you how you can build the worksheet uh, in Excel as we go, because that'll give you a better idea of the formula. We can practice Excel with it. And, uh, and then, and then we could see how to basically can, we can make this external uh, worksheet if you want to put it together. So that is that, like I say, it's a work in progress, and we'll continue building on it as we go double checking it for errors, because we, we have now an internal control, meaning with accounting, we have a double entry accounting system for the balance sheet being in balance, for example, do not have that with the tax return. So if we can double check what has happened two times for our data input in the tax return, as well as in with our Excel worksheet and do some of the calculations again in Excel, although we have to find a nice balance between not redoing everything, not being so detailed, it's gonna to take too much time versus doing enough data input so that we have the internal control, the double check and can basically understand what's going on, then that's gonna give us another level of assurance and be something that you might want to do as a general practice uh, if you're doing data input into tax software.